Hi, it's me, Daphne, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am doing the No Books Allowed tag. So, obviously, this is a bookish YouTube channel. I love booktube, I love reading, I love all things books, but I thought this could be a fun way for you to get to know me a little bit better. I was tagged by Maggie, the creator of these questions, as well as another friend, Becky, so I'm excited to answer the, the prompts, the questions for you. The first question is, what is your spirit animal? So <laughs> my first instinct is a mythical creature. I don't know if like I embody this creature per se, but like if I had a creature that was like my magical companion or like my Patronus, I envision a phoenix. I love phoenixes. I love the like lore around them, how they never die pretty much. Like I love that <laughs> to die and then be born again of the ashes. Like I just love that concept. So I would do a Phoenix. I was at a friend's party and she has an artist friend and I asked her to draw me a Phoenix. So I have this little sketch. She's very talented. It got a little bent in my purse because I was a little drunk when I came home. <laughs> she didn't sign it though, which was kind of a shame. And then in sorority, I was a founding member of this chapter. So I got to name my sorority like family, like our grouping of girls and we chose the Phoenix family at my suggestion. So I've always had like phoenixes in my mind. I just love that. So I would do that. But if it was gonna be like a typical answer, I'd probably say like, like a dog or something boring. <laughs> I don't know, what's, what's a typical animal? I don't know. I don't know like for a typical animal that I see myself as. Let me know in the comments if you like think of an animal that immediately comes to mind for what I could be. That would be fun to see what you guys think of me. The next question is favorite movie couple. Now I don't watch a lot of rom com -y movies. I actually find romance low-key kind of cringy in media outside of books. <laughs> like I liked Bridgerton, but I don't like the like slow-mo let's make out moments. Like they kind of they like kind of cringe me out. Even with reality TV, like I love watching The Bachelorette. I love watching Too Hot to Handle, Love is Blind, like all that stuff. I find the drama so fun, but like the making out and like, it's, it's a little silly. I don't find it super genuine, <laughs> but like I love the drama and, the, and I'm entertained. Um, but I can't say like I have a favorite movie couple, but I do want to shout out a really good movie that I watched maybe a couple years ago by now. It was called The Half of It. It's on Netflix. It's a queer romance. It's like this young girl is like pining after this other woman. And this guy asked that girl to help him write love letters to that same woman. Like they're in high school or something. So it's like, they're both crushing on the same girl. And it's really cute. I don't know. It's like friendship and stuff. I don't know. I don't, I could rewatch it again because it's been so long. I don't remember exactly what happened, but yeah, shout out to that movie. The next question is favorite Disney princess. And this is a quick, easy one, Mulan. I love Mulan. She is such a BA. Uh, I love her story. I love their soundtrack. I'm not like a super Disney fan or anything. I'm definitely not like a Disney adult. I've never been to Disneyland or Disney World. I probably won't go until I have my own kids to take because it's expensive. I don't know how people would just be going there. But I do love Mulan and I have some of the songs on my phone. No other Disney movie has the privilege of being on my Apple Music playlist. Ooh, okay, the next question is favorite villain. And then this is like another <laughs> mythology type answer. So I picked Medusa. I just find her so fascinating. Like I, and I haven't read any Medusa books. I really should actually, maybe there was Medusa in that Cersei book. Maybe I don't, I don't remember, but I just love her as a concept as well. This strong woman who's been kind of outcast who can like freeze people into stone and like, I don't know, that's just like mad powerful. And I feel like she's been wronged. She's, I feel like she's just very misunderstood, but she's definitely the villain in a lot of people's stories. Um, and I just find her fascinating. <laughs> I keep wanting to be her for Halloween, but they don't really have good costumes for Medusa. Like I have, my, my hair, you know, is kind of reminiscent of like snakes or whatever, but how am I gonna make it look snake-like. And then they have these like crowns on Amazon that aren't really my vibe. But yeah, one day I would love to be a Medusa for Halloween. I just can't figure it out. 
Another easy question, how old are you? So I am 29 years old. My birthday is in October, October 29th. So I had my golden birthday last year, which I posted about on Instagram. I wore like a gold dress. They had a sash and everything, you know, I try to make it as fun as I could. I usually don't do anything particularly special for my birthday, but this October I turned 30 and I'm feeling a little pressure to like do something special for it. What that is, I don't know. I'm gonna be going on a bachelorette trip that same month for another friend. So maybe I don't think I'm gonna like travel for my 30th anymore because I'm already gonna be traveling that month for something else and they're so close together, but I wanna do something special for 30. 30 is a big one. So I'm 29 right now though. I'm 29 right now, I'm not 30 yet. My mother was like, <laughs> when I was turning 29, when it was coming up, she was like, just be 29. Live in your 29th year. Don't skip ahead to 30, like don't agonize over it. Just be 29. And I think that advice is so awesome. I think it's so valid, so insightful, like so positive to not like be so stressed about the future. Just like be who you are now. Just like be 29 and then you'll be 30 later <laughs> and it'll be fine. <laughs> the next question is what character would be your best friend? I had a hard time with this. Again, it's like, I'm trying to think outside of books, right? There are scripted shows that I watch and I'm trying to think like, who would be my friend? <laughs> who do I think I could vibe with? There's probably a ton of answers I could give, but I just like couldn't think of that many shows. But one that I saw that I was like, oh, I'd probably be friends with her <laughs> was Betty from Ugly Betty. That show I loved, I watched the whole thing. It's such a funny, like goofy show, but very heartfelt at the same time. And Betty is always just trying to do the right thing. She's so good hearted. She's a little goofy. And I just feel like we would click. I just, I don't know. I feel like I gravitate towards people that are a little bit like Betty. So that's my pick. <laughs> the next question is what character would you marry? And this is, so easy. I've been calling this character my husband for years, and that is Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender. I love Zuko. He is just like so angsty and misunderstood and like traumatized from his past and like just trying to make things right and then like making mistakes and growing and like his character arc is so interesting and I've always loved Zuko, so I've been calling him my husband for years. Love him. <laughs> so much so that I told my friend Monica that Zuko is my husband and she changed the profile picture for my husband in her phone to be a picture of Zuko. <laughs> so Chase's contact picture in her phone is of Zuko. Next question is what is your favorite movie? So this was easier to answer than you may imagine, maybe? <laughs> But the answers are so different than my reading taste. Like again, like I don't love romance in media outside of books because I read so many books with romance and I just like the way I can consume the story and like imagine it and like be in their heads and stuff versus like watching it is different. I really don't like that as much. So my favorite movies, I've given you three. The first one, my top favorite movie because it literally makes me hysterically cry at the end every single time I watch it. Even when I watch the clip that makes me cry out of context on YouTube, I'm like doing nothing and we just put it on. I will literally sob hysterically. And that movie is Train to Busan. This is a Korean movie, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's Korean. I should know if it's Korean. I'm 99% sure it's Korean. Yeah, it's Korean and it's a zombie movie. <laughs> so it's scary. It's like this guy, is on the train, he's like with his young daughter. She's maybe like seven or between seven and nine. No, maybe like, I don't know. She's fairly young, but like smart enough. And they're trying to get to Busan. They're on like this bullet train or whatever. And a virus like breaks out or something and people are turning into zombies. But because they're isolated on this train, people don't really know what's happening until one of the zombies or like one of the people that got bit by one stumbles onto their train at one of the stops and then like, chaos ensues on the train. It is so freaking good. That movie is so good. If you've seen that movie, is it not impossible to like not love that movie? That movie is amazing. It's so good. The, you feel the stakes. It's like a little silly at times, but it's just so fun. And my heart is destroyed at the end every single time. 
I won't say anything else. If you haven't seen it, you must watch it. If you are physically able to, I'd recommend watching it in subtitles with the original Korean language because you'll get the acting so much better. Dubbed, I haven't watched it in dubbed, but I, I already know based on the performance at the end that makes me sob, it will not be the same if there's a different voice actor over that performance. It just will not be the same. You need to hear, at least for the end, you need to hear the way that is acted out because it will rip your heart out. At least it rips my heart out. <laughs> and I hope it rips your heart out too. Um, so, oh God, love that movie. And then another one I really like that is like my quick, easy answer sometimes is San Andreas, which is a movie that The Rock is in. I love that movie. It's like a natural disasters type of movie. The woman, um, Alexandria Didadrio, I think you pronounce her name. She's like this beautiful woman. She's very pale. She's like dark hair and these like absolutely hypnotizing blue eyes. I am obsessed. Like she's probably one of the most beautiful women that I've ever seen. I I'm obsessed with her along with some other people, but like we're focused on this movie. <laughs> It's about San Andreas and how like there is an earthquake and these natural disasters start happening and like The Rock is like a firefighter or something. He's like involved in like helping in these kinds of situations. But like just the way the disasters keep escalating, literally, like, like you'll see something you're like, wow, that's really bad. And then something else happening, you're like, wow, that's, that's worse. And then it's like, oh my God, that's even worse. And the worse, worse, and it just like escalates so entertainingly for me. <laughs> I'm just like so entertained. So I love that movie also. And then the last movie I'll say is Parasite. This is another Korean movie. I will admit the first time I watched it, I went in completely blind and it blew my mind. Me and Chase, I think we went to the theater. I was like, oh, like this, I just saw a bit of the preview. I was like, wow, this looks like something Chase would really like. Cause he loves like Asian media and stuff like that. I was like, we should go see this movie. So we had no idea what we were going into. The, the preview was very vague and the things that were revealed and the things that happened, they were insane. And we absolutely loved that movie. But then I purchased it on Prime and we watched it for a second time and it just does not hit the same. It's like one of those things where it's like the best experience is always the first time. Like it will never be as good as the first time just because you know what's going to happen and you know the reveals and stuff. So it's just, it's not a rewatchable movie, but the first time the first time. It's beautiful. If you haven't seen it, don't look up any single spoilers. Just watch it and know that it's like kind of scary. Like it's thriller-esque. It's so freaking good. But I think on a second watch, at least you'll get to see like the little Easter eggs and stuff that are placed in. You can appreciate the movie as an art form, even though you won't get the same fun shock value out of it. So... Oh, that movie was so good too. But Train to Busan, you could literally watch like over and over and over again and still be obsessed with it. Next question is best cartoon character ever. So I picked Zuko originally first, but then I was like, oh, I remembered another animated show that I really, really, really enjoyed. And that was Arcane. So I picked Jinx from Arcane. She's the sister with the blue hair. I'm pretty sure her name was Jinx. They're coming out with a second season soon. So I want to rewatch the first one. And I love that show so much. It's based off a video game. I'm pretty sure I've never played the game. I don't know that much about the game, but I love the art style in it. I love the storytelling. I love the sisterly bond and then conflict and heartbreak and ugh. So amazing. The music, I think, was even really, really good. Yes, the intro song. I was obsessed with the intro song. That's another thing that I've downloaded into my Apple Music playlist because I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I can't wait to rewatch it and I'm excited to see what they do in the second season. Maybe I'll invite some friends to like rewatch it with me because I was telling Monica about it. And I've tried to get Chase to watch it before. Like when I watched it the first time, I was like, oh, do you want to watch this with me? He wasn't really interested. And then I finished it and I was like, oh my God, this was so good. And he still wasn't, it wasn't like something he was intrigued in. Again, he likes more like anime and stuff. I've told my mom about it. I think she tried it, but it wasn't really for her. But for me, I think it's freaking fantastic. I loved it. And Jinx is so cool. And like, if I could be Jinx in like a cosplay or whatever, I would love to do that. I just, what am I gonna be, black Jinx? Like maybe, I guess, but like, it's just not the same. <laughs> also, I don't wanna buy a wig. I'm lazy. I don't like costumes that much. What do you wanna do when you grow up? Uh, I just want to be famous. <laughs> I just want to be rich and famous 
and have no controversies and just have an enjoyable passive income and be well known and beloved. Yeah, I would love to just be famous. I always wanted to be on TV or the big screen. When I was younger, I wanted to be like a news anchor, like a news reporter or like a weather woman or something. I just wanted to be on TV, but then I figured you'd have to be like a reporter for that. And I was like, oh God, I'm not very good at writing. <laughs> At least at the time, like I wasn't, I was like, I don't want to be a reporter or a writer, like in that capacity. So I gave up that dream. Um, but that's why I made this YouTube channel as well, because I get to be on your screens, whether that's your phone screen, you know, you're casting it to your TV or whatever. I'm living a, a little taste of my, my dream. Maybe one day, um, it'll evolve. <laughs> Probably not. Next question is, what is your favorite music? So, uh, I'm not like super moved buy music. Like, I like music. I don't dislike music. I'd say my go-to genres are R&B for sure and pop. And I've gotten a little bit more into electronic type stuff only because Chase is obsessed with that stuff. So he's playing it around me all the time. So I've gotten used to it over the years. I remember earlier in our relationship when he would play that stuff, I'd be like, can you please turn this off? <laughs> I still do that sometimes because some of the songs he picks for me sound just so repetitive that I'm like, oh my God, it's like 10 minutes of like the same like da -da 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 -da, like beat over and over again. And it just like drives me insane. But I have found like niches within the electronic stuff that he listens to that I enjoy. Um, but mainly I'd say definitely R&B, like Alicia Keys, Rihanna, Chris Brown, that kind of vibe. Um, and then pop, I like Ariana Grande. Um, I like Taylor Swift's old stuff. I'm not really into her new stuff. And then for like the electronic stuff, I love Rufus De Soul. I think they're so talented. I went to their concert. I thought it was amazing. I'm not really a concert person, but that was one that was like, I'll never forget it. Absolutely obsessed. What a beautiful night. Next question is, what never fails to make you happy? And in the silliest, simplest way, I would say just a beautiful sunny day where I get to spend time outside in like fresh air, in green space, the sun on my skin, a good book in my hand, even though there's no books allowed. Great company, I need, like I love being surrounded by people I care about, with some like outdoor activities. Like Saturday, this past Saturday, me, Chase, and our other friend rode our city bikes up from the Brooklyn Bridge all the way to 81st Street because they had blocked the roads for the cars and they had just bikes and people running along like all the way up to like 125. Then we went to the park, we had our picnic blanket, Chase had the speaker and the frisbee, Nick and Ina met up with us and we hung out outside and it was just a lovely day. Lovely day. So, or even days when I can just grab coffee and be with Chase and like sit outside for a while. Oh, those are my favorite days. If there was a room filled with all your favorite people, dead, alive, famous, etc., who would you run to first? And my answer is probably most people's answers, and that's my mom. And I'm really fortunate to have her in my life. I'm very fortunate that we have a really, really great bond and connection and respect for each other. Um, I don't think she would like say we were friends because there's this level of respect that I have for her but we love each other very, very deeply and I love spending time with her and I'm fortunate that she loves spending time with me. So, my mom. What do you like to do besides read? Um, <laughs> I like to do other things. The main thing that I really enjoy doing lately is playing on my PlayStation 5. It actually takes away from my reading time because I love playing it so much and I can get caught up for like a few hours just like engrossed in this world. But the games I do like to play are very story based, like the storyline and the adventuring and the exploring. So in a sense, it's similar to a book, but I get to like control it. <laughs> so I'm playing Assassin's Creed right now. I'm one franchise behind. I'm playing Valhalla, which I've mentioned in other vlogs before. So still enjoying that. This question is so random. I feel like maybe Maggie asked this. I don't remember if she says she does this, but the question is, do you sleep talk slash walk? She does. She, I remember now. She does sleep talk. I don't sleep talk or walk. <laughs> so the answer is no. Um, I'm pretty sure Chase would tell me if that was the case. I think it's funny. I mean, if he like half woke me up and asked me a question, I would probably try to answer it and then maybe not remember in the morning, but I'm not like saying things suddenly based on, you know, just on my own. But that's a funny, that's a funny question. Do you sleep, talk, or walk? The next one says, choose your weapon, go. 
I think my weapon of choice would be a dagger. It's like something kind of stabby, stabby, stabby. <laughs> or a hidden blade to go along with the Assassin's Creed vibe. So in Assassin's Creed, they have this like arm bracer kind of thing. And then it has a blade that like, you'd be like, kind of like Spider-Man and then it shoots out the blade and then they like stab like that. And they're assassins. So they're, they'll be like, I'll be like sneaking around bushes and I'll just sneak up and be like, ah, stab. <laughs> so I'd probably pick that. And then like, I think a dagger works too, because like, you know, if it was a historical fantasy or something, I'd probably be like a lady and I'd have a gown. I don't think I'd be like, in pants, like running around with the sword. Like I don't, I don't picture myself in that environment as a character. I feel like I would definitely be like a lady of the court and I have a dagger. And if someone's gonna try to wrong me, if I need to defend myself, dagger. So yeah, that's my vibe. Favorite karaoke ballad to belt out? This was another easy question. My go-to karaoke song is If I Ain't Got You by Alicia Keys. Look it up if you don't already know it. I absolutely love that song. For some reason, I sing it not half bad. I'm definitely not an excellent singer or anything, but I sing it all the time, so I have a lot of practice. And I just love the emotion in it. I actually walked down the aisle at my wedding to that song, so now it has even more meaning. I love it, I love it. The next question is, tell me an embarrassing story about yourself. So I don't get embarrassed very often. If anything, I just feel like socially uncomfortable or like kind of upset. You know, I don't feel embarrassed, I'd say. Though I did do something recently after I answered these questions. I answered them probably last week. <laughs> but I did do something since then that was like the first time I felt slightly embarrassed in a very long time, or at least in recent memory. So the recent one, Chase was getting ready for our run. You know, we were gonna go on a run together after work and he puts on the tank top that we got from running the Brooklyn 10K, right? It's this like bright green top. And I have the same one, right? Cause we both did the race. You get the shirts as like a goodie bag, giveaway, whatever thing. And he's like, oh, do you want to match with me? And I was like, sure. And he's just saying it jokingly, but I was like, yeah, that sounds so funny. I was like in a giggly mood. So we get dressed. I take like a cute picture of us, put it on Instagram stories, it's cute. But as soon as we stepped outside, I was like, I was like extra giggly <laughs> and a little uncomfortable. So I was like slightly embarrassed <laughs> to be so obviously matching. It wasn't like we're just like, oh, we're all in black and we just kind of coordinate. It's like we're wearing the same bright green shirt. <laughs> so that was slightly embarrassing, but like in a silly fun way that I chose to do. It wasn't like somebody embarrassed me or like some accidental thing happened that was embarrassing. It was just like we were being silly. All right, so those are all the questions for this tag. I'm gonna tag some YouTubers down below and hopefully they have fun answering these questions at some point as well. I took three months to film this myself. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it and obviously it helps out my channel and I will catch you in another video. Bye!